What's up, YouTube? This is Kevin and Ian with Zero HP, and we are doing another episode of Gaming News and Chill. Gaming and Chill? Yep. And this okay. week, we have some big news we want to cover. Um, I, I, let's just start off with the biggest, the biggest thing. The biggest news that dropped this week was PlayStation 4.5. What? <laughs> What what do you what how do you feel about that? Uh, how about you know what I, I want I want to let you go first on you want to okay yeah I want to I, let you go because I'm actually really curious what you think I I I am not upgrading I am absolutely not upgrading it's only been two years since the PlayStation Four was released and they're already releasing a PlayStation Four point five now I'm sure they're gonna be running some sort of like trade up program. Uh, trade your PlayStation 4 in for a 4.5, but I, no, absolutely. I don't think they will. Yeah, you don't think so? No, because those systems, because in order to do a trade-up program, you have to incentivize the companies that are taking in. I mean, unless unless Sony does it. Yeah. Which I, I mean, it doesn't make for sense for Sony to just because if you start if you if Sony will take like take in mail-in offers for a PS4. Yeah. They're just undercutting any pro any potential profit they'd make out of i mean they cost them however much to upgrade this 4.5 yeah and there's no way to incentivize gamestop because now all these ps2s that are coming in are worth jack shit <laughs> so you can't there's really yeah. no way to do a trade-in that sucks anyway, sorry I no no i just <laughs> i i don't I, I i don't like the idea of a 4.5 in fact that you know, I, I understand they're trying to outdo or improve on what they have, but the the fact that we've just came out of like, I mean, yes, this last generation of consoles has been a unique one, where it's last it lasted almost a whole decade. You know, they're, that's too long, they're, too long. yeah, a whole decade. I understand, but this is like the complete opposite spectrum. Like you're already upgrading the consoles now. For people that, you know, I have, you know, we, Mason, for example, Mason, our friend Mason, right. recently bought a PlayStation 4. Yeah, fuck him. Yeah, I know. Basically, now, it's a big, you know, fuck you. Hey, you just bought it. Now, there's a 4.5 out, though. <laughs> so, I, I, I'm not, I'm not a huge fan of this move. Um, you know, I, I don't know. That, those are my thoughts on that. Yeah, I, <laughs> I don't even know where to start. Because like, <laughs> Sony, all of these big companies make big mistakes. Yeah. And then they make great choices too. I mean, both both companies have made a lot of really good and really bad decisions back and forth. I mean, the way Xbox One opened up horribly, just horribly, mm -hmm. is the reason they're not, they're getting destroyed by PlayStation. Yep. But they've, Microsoft has really turned it around. Yep. Um, made some as good someone moves. Who, owns, who has owned both consoles basically from launch. Mm -hmm. I, I love them both, but I over time, I, Microsoft has really turned around. And then uh, you have a – there's so many things that are wrong with this. I mean, just from a – like from an internal company point of view, yeah, you've sold 38 million PS4s. Yeah. So you've, ba you've doubled the sales of your direct competitor. Nintendo is drowning in the yeah. – Disaster of the Wii U. That's <laughs> I mean, Wii U is not, it's a fine system, but yeah. it didn't sell at all. Yeah. yeah. And like now, as Sony, like, okay, so what can we do to, you don't have to do anything. The PS4 yeah. is still selling, it's yeah. the number one seller every single month. Yeah. And now you come in and you, you get this 4.5 or Neo, as they're yeah. calling it. Yeah. And you know, their their major thing in uh, this this release, and this is not a press release from Sony. These are all coming from very good sources, though yeah. inside. Mm -hmm. And what they're what Sony is saying is they're not going to split their audience. So like any multiplayer game has to work fine for both both versions of the console. Any um, you know all the games have to be able to work for both. So they're they're saying that they're not splitting the market, but just the fact as an owner of a PS4 now, like not that I really care. But now that this comes out, I'm going to be buying these games. I'm paying sixty dollars for these games, knowing that I'm playing a lesser version of a product. Yeah, yeah, that's like, exactly. That just makes me as a consumer like I already gave you four hundred dollars. Yeah, and they want four hundred dollars for this new one. Mm -hmm. 
no one's forcing me to buy it. I'm not yeah. going to buy it. Yeah. But at the same time, every time I p- turn on my PS4, uh, I'm going to be like, <sighs> like I know in my head, like this is not the top of the line this machine. Is, yeah. This is some like this is like a a, a second grade. Yeah. You know, machine. And then you also you have a marketing and PR problem when you do E3 now and you show me the new God of War, or you show me the new Killzone or yeah whatever Horizon. Yeah. Zero Dawn. What are you showing me? Are we seeing? Are we now seeing these games on this Neo system? So how do I go find footage from the PS4 to know that I want to buy? It? You know what I mean? There yeah. are so many problems with this, and it yeah. makes no. The number one question I'm like want to ask you like put yourself in Sony's shoe right now, right? Like like you're Sony's shoes. Mm-hmm. The number one question I got why. What what are they? What, why? Why? What's well, the, yeah. What's the what's the you're, reasoning you're behind selling, this move? You're destroying your competition. Only. Yeah. You're only two, what two and a half three years into the cycle. Yeah, absolutely ridiculous. I, I and then the the last like, what I think Xbox is gonna do, and I think this whole thing is gonna switch around. Maybe yeah. not, but what Xbox should do is go. Okay, they shouldn't make an Xbox one and a half or whatever you want to call it. <laughs> Just go to 2018 and yeah. release your next console. Yeah. It's now better than the Neo. Yeah. It's the next Xbox console. Yeah. Which they've been talking about making it fully uh, front and back compatible. So you, you have the new games and then all Xbox One and all the 360 backwards. Com- so you have this platform, this Xbox platform. Yeah. That you release in 2018. And now... Sony has already committed all these funds into PSVR and creating this 4.5. Now they're talking about not even creating a PS5 for any time soon. So you can immediately come out and turn the 4.5 into the Wii U. Yeah. And make it a lesser system and no one's buying it because no one's going to buy it. It's just, it's, I just don't. I, I, I don't. I think it's a bad move, business move, and a bad move for their fans like you know that it's a big yeah, f you but all. yeah it's a big f you saying hey we just bought your system yeah. but i i we like that you bought our system but here's another one that's better so yeah. can you buy this one as well yeah, buy this yeah. One too. well that's the thing yeah. that's what they're saying oh you don't have to it's it, all of our games yeah, work be... for both okay fine yeah. then why are you bringing this out yeah like it doesn't it doesn't make any sense like they're saying that the requirement for a game to be released on the ps4 now has should have both the neo version oh, and the regular yeah. version but like there's a whole other problem yeah. if you're sony so yeah. not only you have to deal with how do you market how do you market how do you release how do you show games how do you sell this system uh but now you also have to worry now all of your developers have to opt start optimizing which is the number one problem with pc development as mm-hmm. we see in games all the time is they try to optimize these games for shit computers and good computers <laughs> try to make it like a little easier for people to play yeah and it creates all kinds of problems look at batman oh god yeah you know i got under so what are they going to do are these studios now is activision going to start outsourcing their ps4 neat like regular versions to some shit company <laughs> and they work on the neo one yeah or they're gonna have to create two versions like of optimizing uh, it's just a disaster on every yeah. front i don't uh, maybe I don't we're just... wrong uh, maybe, maybe they figured out. out a way to do it but i i don't know like I mean, it, i'm a developer it, it, i'm like oh yeah man, i gotta fucking make two versions of this game now. i mean if they if they're smart they wouldn't make it that that difficult for it to convert from a ps4 version to a neo version but well, no, we won't know. All of this is just, I mean, this is all rumor where nothing has been confirmed by Sony. I mean, no, it uh, hasn't. I mean, so... it's more than rumor, but it's, more, yeah, you're right. I mean, it's, it's confirmed from inside sources. Yeah. Inside sources. All of so... these, like, you know, Kotaku yeah. and IGN, all these guys, like the, the people who are reporting this are like, they, I trust this source yeah. and all this information wouldn't just be pouring out from multiple sources. It's definitely yeah. true. Yeah. Um, and, and now Sony has kind of seen the reaction, and I'm sure we'll see the whole thing at E3. Yeah. Yep. You know what I'm excited to see for at E3? Overwatch. Overwatch. It's going to be so awesome. I want to see more footage. Um, Overwatch is coming out next month, May. So A lot of games uh, are coming out, man. Yeah, a lot of games. uh, I'm going to be really excited for Overwatch, though. So. Uh, yeah, um, I I was not excited for Overwatch at first. Uh, when someone told me it was a first person shooter MOBA, like, <laughs> I'm not a MOBA guy. Yeah, uh, at all. 
Yeah. So I was like, I'm good. Yeah. So <laughs> I started watching those cool little like cutscenes and just yeah. kind of getting to know the characters. And mm-hmm. I've been watching. You and I were watching this like documentary on yep. GameSpot about like the creation of Overwatch and where it came from. And now I'm kind of like really into it, and I want to definitely want to play it. So. Yeah. Yeah, I'm excited I'll have to for do some let's plays of that. Yeah, we'll do some let's plays, some gaming sessions. If you guys ever want to join us, we do have a Steam group. You guys yeah. are always welcome to join, and we're pro- oh well, this is on a Blizzard. No, that's gonna be weird. It's oh, true. That's right. yeah, yeah, it's on a Blizzard thing, but we can we'll figure it out. Just you, comment on the it. comment in the video down there with maybe your whatever your Blizzard tag is. We'll we'll play sometimes, you know. Yeah. If you guys were sure. interested, um, but another you know another big news that came out this week um no more 360s being made yeah no more 360 right yeah so it's uh it's an end of an era almost it really is like what yeah. are some of your fondest memories of, of the 360? Uh, gears Just of war back. one oh. by far is one of my favorite i mean halo was always good but for oh, me yeah. for me i just I, in 2008 that whole year in years to come was like the best years of my life just playing gears yeah, well, war the one first game came yeah. out in 06 if you yeah it. oh yeah dude it, it's been one of the best i, I think is one of my favorite consoles just because of the sheer amount oh, of absolutely. games that came out uh, the the uh re- revolutionary controller the the 360 controller was one of my favorite controllers of all time fantastic yeah um, i mean it just it just it really like the i think the, the most important thing even though i'm not like when it comes to gaming, I'm mm. mainly single player centric. Even yeah. despite that, just realizing the importance of the 360, they really created like the party system. Oh all yeah, the social networking, the social stuff, the like, matchmaking, the, the yeah. whole like the dashboard. There's voice audio, chat, party market, chat, yeah, arcade. market. Like, yeah, it's like a really, really big console. Like, I don't think yeah. people people always shit on it because of the Red Rings of Death, and yeah, yeah. that was a huge problem. Yeah. Um, but, but the thing them. still sold over 80 million. Years. Oh yeah, it, ridiculous. You know, Sony's ass. Yeah, that generation was uh, one-sided, very yeah, much. So. I, I loved the PS3 too. Like, yeah. I'm not like an Xbox fan. I do prefer Xbox a little bit, but yeah. I, I I like I played both systems forever. So yeah. Um, but yeah, I've yeah. I've loved. There's so they introduced us to so many exclusive Microsoft. The original exclusive. Mass Effect was. Yeah. An exclusive oh profile. my goodness! Like, yes, my all-time so favorite series. Games. Um, yeah, so many great games. I mean, like you said, there's a social aspect that was added in there. Like I've gotten to know so many people from Xbox Live that I have mm-hmm. become friends with outside of Xbox since then. So there's that. Um, really I just the only, very literally the yeah. only major Western console that's ever been successful, and no one thought that they would be because the original Xbox, every single original Xbox that was sold was sold at a deep loss of profit for microsoft yeah um it was just microsoft's reaction to sony basically just conquering the whole market yeah um and they were like just get it out just make something so they just cobbled the original xbox together released it it just it i mean it it did well like they you know but then they were like all right we got to sit down we got to make plans yeah 360 you know they developed the 360 and uh it was one of the best consoles of all time yeah, absolutely. I'm. I'm. It's bittersweet. Bittersweet, cause uh, I mean, it's it's due time to like move on to the next generation. Like you yeah. said, if they're if at Microsoft plans to make everything backwards compatible, anyways, that's it can only be a good thing, you know. Yeah, they're so. going they're going backward and forward, and I think this whole 4.5 PS4 and Xbox, this thing could turn around if like you get in 2018. Yeah. Um, and I know that you are like major like a pc gamer now yeah. which is awesome like yeah you know, i have my pc here too yeah. um but since they did you know after the disaster of their opening of xbox one and mm. then kind of the shitty launch um ever since what was that last november when they did that dashboard update yeah like microsoft has been on fucking fire yeah they've done a lot of good uh good plays as of uh late and they released some really good games they've uh, great, made some really I good love moves that console. like we yeah. and you know and the whole the whole their whole marketing thing of like xbox one it's the only yeah. thing you need in your living room like yeah it is true like that's what we use like that's yeah. my blu-ray player and my netflix player and youtube yeah. like I, I use that thing for for everything um yeah you know and so i i definitely uh, good memories with 360, and I'll definitely yeah. be sticking with Xbox though for yeah. a long 
That's good. I'm 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 always I started my I've never owned a PS3 and I owned a 360 and I just loved the crap out of my 360. Yeah, the and PS3 I, I think was a better machine. Yeah. And but the 360 I've, service dude, is just way better. Yeah, I've went through let me see. I tally a grand tally of like four or five Xbox 360 different versions. I got like two red rings and then I yeah. upgraded twice from the slim yeah, to the just like this little details whatever. like the fucking disc tray. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, guys. Like the PS3 had to slip in. You know, yeah. It's, it's little little things like little that. Thing. No Blu-ray player, which was no, ridiculous. Well, the thing is, though, I think that they jumped a little far ahead with that yeah. because that caused them a lot of problem in the beginning because they had that yeah. cell processor in the PS3 with the Blu-ray player. Yeah. And no one knew how to develop for that shit at all. Yeah. And That's true. the uh, PS3 yeah. also came out. If you remember, it was six hundred dollars. Yeah, could because of the Blu-ray. Yeah. So then they put the you know the they put the DVD, the DVD player in the 360. Mm -hmm. And developers preferred to develop for 360, and it, I think that helped get them ahead. Yeah, and they just blew Sony out of the water that last generation. Yeah, and yeah. now it's flipped around. <laughs> yeah, it's flipped around now. It's just because technology is advanced, uh, easier yeah. to program for Blu-rays and all that stuff. And you just yeah, yeah. Well, now we know how to yeah. do it. It's you know times have changed. Yeah, times have changed. <laughs> you know, we just uh, it just goes back and forth. You know, it's just the way. Yeah. It, plus, if you if you just downright blunder your launch press conference like microsoft did it's, <laughs> we got off on the wrong foot. but phil uh, spencer ever since phil spencer took over i have become an xbox fan they've done a great good. job for the most part yeah that's good because uh yeah that press press conference was pretty bad oh pretty, my god uh you cannot share it's drm so uh <laughs> that guy uh, immediately quit his job like yeah. a month later the head uh, of xbox, i don't even know uh, his name he went to work for like zune or some shit yeah so, yeah it was yeah it was some sort of like mobile gaming something or other and then phil spencer came in he's like no it's a gaming console yeah we'll take care of it. uh next topic so yeah. uh next topic we have a few things uh let's start off with just small things like uh star fox reviews uh very yeah. uh unexpected and anticlimactic uh what did you think of some of the reviews that we've seen so far of uh, Star Fox, they didn't really surprise me to be honest. Because yeah. every article, preview article I read, or yeah. uh, you know, any of the podcasters that I listen to that have preview access, yeah, they all kind of felt the same way. It looked like shit. <laughs> they didn't understand how the controls work because it makes you use the game pad. Yeah, and like the reticule of the gun. So you're you're flying. You you're using your television. Yeah, to you know see where you're going. Yeah. And the gamepad has a first-person view, a cockpit view, and then you shoot from there. Yeah. <laughs> so you have to go like this. Yeah. And like you know. Yeah. Like all the reviews, the reviews I've read says like they they understand it's kind of like in, you know, it's innovative. It's like it's a little different. It freshens yeah. it up a little bit. But at the end of the day, it's just kind of annoying. Yeah, like, I'm. Here's with the thing with Nintendo. I ever since the Wii, I just I, I'm so tired of the gimmicky yeah. peripherals. I just like they they had such a solid build with their GameCube and their GameCube controller. Mm -hmm. I that is like the GameCube controller is on my list of one of my favorite controls of all time. I'm like just stick with the original. Like I understand that you guys are trying to innovate. And all that, well, but Wii, it's just, I mean, the Wii, like, yeah. isn't it's the number one selling console? Oh, of all time, I understand that, but like, there's nothing on there that it was like calling. I did. Uh, my sister owned the Wii. I did not own Wii because I there was no games on there that I wanted. You know, I'm no. like there was like just just really boring like Wii and Fit you had to use and stuff. The damn sticks. Yeah, yeah, the nunchucks, dude, the nunchucks. <laughs> I'm like, no, dude, I didn't uh, want that. I wanted my traditional. I hated the Wii. I fucking yeah. hated the Wii. Yeah, I wanted my I, traditional controller, my get my good, words. my good games, my mature games, but uh, yeah, yeah. So I mean, that's uh, that's what I expected as well. Star Fox, um, you know, was re after reviewing reviewing a lot of the reviews, <laughs> uh, they were mediocre. So mediocre, you know. Yeah. And, and the main thing that they liked was the fact that it's basically a rehash of the N six of Star 64. Fox sixty four. Yeah. Which is a phenomenal game. Yeah. So obviously they're going to enjoy that those sections because nostalgia is going to hit you hard. Yeah, absolutely. Um, but then I would read like it doesn't really even look that much better than. Yeah. 
know, that, I, I oh, understand that you know graphics aren't everything, and I yeah. do believe that graphics are not everything. Yeah. But if you're going to be doing a space combat pilot game, like it would help your case a lot if you yeah, have a pretty. You, yeah, upped up. I mean, because the, the Wii U is capable of that. Like, for example, Xenoblade was actually a good looking game. So I don't understand where the difference is in that. Uh, well, Star Fox Zero has been in development for years. And yeah. Years, so I just don't know if they had like restart and start over. I don't know what uh, they were doing. I don't know what Nintendo's fucking doing anymore. Yeah, they, they, they we've had this conversation before, but I, yeah. I honestly think that Nintendo does not give a crap about the Western audience at all. Like yeah. they, they own Japan, so they don't need to cater to the West. As much because, as you could tell, there's so many Nintendo exclusive Japanese titles that will never ever come to See America. Day, yeah. yeah, I'm like never. Like they don't give a crap about us, you know. We're only like extra money on top of their already dominant Japanese market, you know. So yeah, I mean, I just, yeah, and, and you're right. We have kind of gone over that. But yeah, I just feel like I I think we're seeing the the results of that of yeah. that of ignoring the u.s and western markets yeah isn't a good idea no and it's mean, not working out for them very well no and, and they the, have another if they have another flop with yeah. nx i think we're going to start seeing nintendo games being published for different consoles because they're not going to be able to they might have a four billion dollars to their name or whatever yeah. but four billion dollars goes away real quick when yeah. you're trying to develop consoles and all of your R&D money and all of your development and production money goes into a black hole because you don't sell anything. Yeah. You know. Yeah, they, they've gotten to that point for me where they're not selling their games or their merchandise on name alone anymore. Because I used to buy things up just because it was Nintendo. You know, it's, oh, it's awesome. Yeah. yeah. But now it's starting it's like after the 90s, after man. the Wii, after the Wii U. I mean, yeah. I still I own a Wii U, but I seldom play it. You know, I'm like, there's really not Just much. In case something comes out. Yeah, like, oh, like I Smash Brothers. That that's the only okay. game I've really played on that right yeah, now. Exactly. So, exactly. Um, so yeah, it's just that I feel the lack of attention to the Western, you know, taste buds is definitely showing. Like, it's not, you know, I I've grown like they have to understand that their their audience, their fan base, is growing up. They they can't just cater to the same age over and over again they need mature content you know they've tried to add stuff like that like bayonetta bayonetta 2 uh -hmm. xenoblade uh, zombie u stuff like that that's cool keep doing that though like you get i've named like no one got to play those yeah i was like yeah exactly you you launched them on a console that you've marketed towards kids and casual like 40 year old gamer yeah it's Parents, like yeah <laughs> they're they're not playing bayonetta no all no. the people who would play bayonetta right here were yeah. on xbox and playstation and pc yep so no yeah. one got no one gets to play it you know it's yeah like, it's unfortunate because uh, so, those games are good i mean nintendo puts out they got tens man yeah the, nintendo gets good games out they just there's not enough of them for me to like say oh yeah they're winning this generation they're not even winning they're just kind of surviving this generation of consoles like they're not they were even, winning, and yeah. then they released the Wii U, and they fell yeah. to last place like immediately. Yeah, I just, I, I I'm we'll so done. Happens. I can't wait for E3 to see what the NX I'm, is all. Yeah, about. I'm so done with the peripheral stuff. Just make a legit, just gaming yeah. console, please. Like yep. that's all we want. I want, I want my Zelda. I want my Pikmin. I want my Animal Crossing, please. Like this, I don't want this like kitty stuff. Like for. For, for a guy that loves Animal Crossing, I love Animal Crossing. This most recent Animal Crossing, oh, yeah. it's just like a mini game thing. It's like a Mario Party. I'm like, I don't want that. I want my traditional oh, Animal Pick Crossing. Me. Oh God, memories. I, yeah, just there's so many good titles. That my favorite Nintendo game. Has. On, my favorite game on the GameCube was the. And we, we talk again. We're kind of rehashing a lot of stuff. Yeah. But was the. I think it was Metroid Prime, the first person shooter. Oh yes. The game was fucking awesome. Yes, yes. Like I said, it's there's really so dark many... and, and gritty and oh, Yeah, there's so, so there's so, so many games that they have that they can go back and like mm -hmm. make titles for. Like they had some we'll great see, man. Zelda, we'll man. See. Yeah, like, it sucks. Like we just have to wait and see what they do. Yeah, yeah. Well I mean that's that's all we can do is just wait. <laughs> but uh our right, last topic for tonight, um and you know, we have I know that Ian plays a lot of this, and I, I play some. Uh, we have new Elder Scrolls news coming out. Um, what, what do we have here, Ian? What do we have? Yeah, well, we, we got the Thieves Guild like a month yeah. ago or a couple weeks ago. 
Yep. Um, and now we're getting the Dark Brotherhood. So they're releasing all the stealth stuff right Ooh. now. And the trailer is sick. Yeah. It's, it's gonna be really good. Uh, I can I can justify this uh, from from experience, you guys. Uh, the original launch of this game was uh not so hot. It did not. Yeah. It did not. Yeah, yeah. it did not launch. Right. There's like a ton. They had the huge bot problems. They had like huge cheat like cheaters. They had issues for the servers, so and so forth. It was a bad launch. And this yeah. is a launch that launched with monthly f- a subscription. subscription. It was ridiculous. Like, everyone so, knew that was a bad idea. Yeah, it's there. Yeah, so it after it was like a year or a year and a half, maybe they released kind of released it. Yeah, they re released it, and that they at the same time they released their console version. So that's when E and I uh, invested in it, and we went into the console version. Yep. And uh, I have to admit, I I enjoy myself. That game is actually really fun. There are oh. no more no more subscription fees. Uh, you buy the game, play it once. That's it. Uh, I mean, you, you could buy other things inside their microtransactions inside of the game, but uh, there's no monthly subscription fee, so that's the most important thing. Uh, but yeah, so you know, Ian and I enjoy it immensely. We play. Uh, there's good. Like, of course, you know, Ian and I are like huge Elder Scrolls lore, you know, yeah, fans. Really into yeah, lore. yeah. So it, it works and it it's cool. It's a lot of fun. We have. Uh, backstories for all of our characters and yeah, fuck yeah man uh, yeah. I, I always do for like all my Elder Scrolls characters like that's why this gives it me yeah. I didn't think I was going to like ESO at first because like yeah. it's like it, the thought of that was like against everything I love about Elder yeah Scrolls. every grain it's in your like, body you're like MMO what MMO. <laughs> yeah, it's all about that isolation that, yeah. that independent experience that you that personal experience that you build but yeah. they just do a good job I don't really play with people yeah, he's, you can still, yeah, you can play a by giant yourself. It's fucking yeah. Elder Scrolls game, yeah. and it's packed full of detail and cool yeah. stories. I mean, it's got some of the MMO tropes, you know, like yeah. respawning enemies and, you know, yeah, little quest stuff, lines. Yeah. The combat's good, and it's a beautiful game. And I don't just it's mean graphically, game. but like artistically. Yeah, it's, it's a like, huge it's a huge world like it's ridiculous amazing, how big it is amazing. and for, they just keep adding and keep yeah. adding and keep adding so i just hope that the community stays strong yeah uh, it's a game that i'll be playing for years to come yeah it's there's a lot of especially if they're adding new content like this like i am so interested in the dark brotherhood i'm so interested in the thieves guild it's gonna be really yeah. fun just to try it out to make like a stealth character i would have a stealth character oh so. that's yeah that's right you can make dude just make your orc a stealth character man oh, no man <laughs> he's like a one man just just You're... like a human lumberjack man you need you need a khajiit then a khajiit that's what i'm thinking actually yeah. I'm seriously i'm thinking about doing uh, a khajiit, khajiit yeah. nice. or argonian <laughs> that's sweet oh yeah speaking of uh argonians there are tons of uh news coming out about this uh elder scrolls just a quick blurp elder scrolls like hearthstone card game coming out yeah yeah uh, legends. legends there you go yeah so what, what i mean i don't really i i know it's in the lines of hearthstone but uh, what, what are I, your thoughts on that just seeing the gameplay it looks like a beat for beat copy of yeah <laughs> just uh skins replaced with uh elder scrolls characters <laughs> pretty much pretty much yeah, um, yeah. but that's fine with me i mean i don't really play hearthstone i have played yeah. hearthstone it's good it's yeah really good but i yeah. i didn't get I, I just didn't want to get it i was like i already buy actual magic cards like yeah. i don't want to start buying packs in this game virtual packs yeah. yeah yeah it's like jesus christ yeah so but uh i, I you know just because i'm such a nerd for Elder Scrolls lore, I'll yeah. probably pick it up or at least try it out, play it. Try it out. It's you probably gonna be do, free. Like, some let's plays of it. It'll probably be like the same like method of uh, you'll probably play it for free in microtransactions for virtual packs or whatever. Mm-hmm. So that might be the same kind of uh, payment method. <laughs> yeah. So it's not technically free. <laughs> well, we do uh, have one. Actually, I know you were saying it was last story, but I think we right. got one. We got one more. All right, what's the last uh, one? The, the last one, because I, I really wanted to hear what you had to say, because we yeah. were about to talk about it, and then we said, oh, wait, no, wait for wait for Game News and Chill. Oh. Uh, what are your opinions on uh, on Game Trust, GameStop's new oh, publishing? Oh, that's right. They've yeah, got Insomniac Game games, Frozen Bite games, and I can't remember the they other They do. Uh, legit studios. Yeah, they, they, they're they um, – it's a definitely uh, – just my, uh, feelings aside of GameStop, it's a definitely a good business play. It's definitely absolutely. good because GameStop will be obsolete in a few years. You know, I, I absolutely oh. obsolete. So aside from that, I want this to work. 
I want it to work. I, I feel mm-hmm. like GameStop has the perfect platform and revenue for them to uh, present these games, uh, get marketing out for these uh, indie games that don't get as much attention as they, su- some would. And uh, I, I want it to work. But here's the thing. At the end of the day, GameStop wants to make money. Now, in the articles that I did read, they they adamantly adamantly suggested they have no input in what creativity um, they have no types of you know input on what the creative right. process yeah, they, is. They don't want to have too much creative control. Yeah. What so doing. I hope that stays you know um, true, but uh, I think that's pretty uh, evident because like for me, I don't. I don't think you go and sign Insomniac games and take thinking away. you're going to be able to control what they yeah. do. Yeah. I don't think Insomniac would sign a deal. Yeah. Insomniac's been all over the board. I mean, they made Ratchet yeah. and Clank for PlayStation only. They made Sunset Overdrive for Microsoft only. Mm. Like, they go and they do what they want to do. And yeah. I feel like they have always had their best interests in mind. And their games are usually kind of weird and like not, yeah. <laughs> they're not mainstream in, in any yeah. kind of way and they still are generally successful that's yeah um so i i just trust that insomniac whatever they saw they believe them and they will sign out with game trust and i think that's a good you know these these they got good legit companies that i think yeah. at least for now maybe when game trust starts like game big or something. company you know like as yeah. far as like little little guys maybe, companies coming yeah. in and fund them maybe that yeah. might be different but at least for now, I think that they do mean that. Yeah, I mean, uh, like I said, I really hope that it'll work out, and uh, it's it's great for like a indie standpoint to get have a partner that can get your mar- your game marketed, and yeah. uh, have the revenue and the distribution that GameStop has. You know, I mean, yeah, be this could cha- yeah, this could be a cha- game changer. Like I I'm known as the indie guy. I love playing indie mm-hmm. games, and uh, it takes. There is no hype. There is no you. Know, just kind of like you find the gem in the in the pile of rough. You know, it gets kind of and then you it look just for explodes. It. Yeah, and it explodes like Stardew you know, Valley. Stardew Valley, for example. No one guy, one guy made that. Can you imagine if he partnered up with GameStop? They right now he's like selling a, a, about a million copies already. You know, on Stardew Valley. Now, if he would were to partner up with GameStop or had partnered up with Game Trust. He could have like double, maybe tripled his, you know, revenue by now, you know. Next game, yeah. Yeah, yeah. so Undertale, like all these games, yeah, are going up. Yeah, so I, I, I want it to work definitely, and I feel like they, it would give the, um, dues to these indie games that deserve it, you know. So yeah, uh, but yeah, it, it really comes down, it boils down to game trust, trusting the studio to, and letting them do their thing, you know. So yeah, absolutely, absolutely, so, I think they'll do it. They'll, they'll yeah. Do it. I think they'll do it too. Uh, we'll see. Because I mean, that's if they're shifting their spending uh, in regards to their company to mm-hmm. maybe more publisher, um, yep. they're gonna have to make good choices and just they and t- in ten years, yeah, it might just be called Game Trust. Yeah, yeah. And there exactly. won't even be any GameStop. Yeah, well, there might be a virtual store called GameStop on a website or something. Yeah, like, why are you gonna like? What are you gonna do? <laughs> I mean, you, can, you can't compete with Steam. Yeah. Really. Yeah, that's you know, true. It's and like really... Origin, EA only sells their fucking games on Origin. Yeah, now. like they so. can't compete with freaking Steam either. It's hard, dude. Well, it, I I feel because their games are only. You know, but exclusive. here's the thing: I it, when EA releases a game, and it's instantly not on Steam, it makes me not want to buy it. And I don't buy I just, it most of the time. Most EA games I play on consoles anyway. Like, yeah, yeah, that's true. I'm not yeah. gonna play Mirrors to Edge on PC. Yeah, I just like, I don't. Yeah, uh, a lot. Of, it's a very, it's a huge deterrent. If I can't have my games all in one, it's a, it's a double edged blade. Or yeah, because like, if you have all your games in one place, it's so convenient. It's mm-hmm. so convenient. And but, oh, yeah. I know that you know you want to help support other studios and other distribution things to oh, yeah. not like, have a monopoly. Like you know, like EA has no financial reason to make Mirror's Edge. They're probably gonna yeah. lose money on it. Yeah. But there was this big cult following and enough demand where they're like, oh, like they're like, all right, we'll make it, you know. So <laughs> I definitely, I, I'm gonna pick it up because yeah. I was a big fan of the first game, and I just wanted to show them like, yeah, I'll, I'll buy a cool single player game from you guys. You don't always yeah. have to release fucking Battlefield. Yeah, definitely agreed, agreed. So. But uh, yeah, so that's that's it for tonight, you guys. Uh, we appreciate you guys again watching. Come chilling out with us. We hope we, inf- you know, we're informative some uh, somewhat. 
Um, so let us know what your opinions are on some of the topics. You know, we're yeah, always please do. we're always chatting with you guys or chatting with people that reply to our videos. Um, like, comment, subscribe, of course, like always. As and, per usual. Yeah, per usual. Uh, mm -hmm. We appreciate you guys again. Um, any last words, Ian? Uh, no. Otherwise, I'll start up another conversation. <laughs> All right. <laughs> well, we thank you guys for chilling and uh, peace. Later.